um, how to develop team culture um, and have that, that positive um, team environment, and then why you want to do it. So I'm actually going to start with a little bit about why. Um, one of my favorite um, books, if you haven't read it, go get it. Um, and our team right now, we're working on a, a book club with this one right now, is Stephen Covey's, Covey's um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's my favorite. Love it. Go get it. Read it a hundred times like I have. Um, and there are two things that I want to talk about from this book, and it talks about um, the importance of team, team culture, creating those relationships in that environment, um, and the first one is around moving from a dependent culture to an independent culture. So when you think about dependence in this business, right, you think about your very first show, it was really scary, maybe you had your director or your recruiter with you at that show, then you work to an independent environment. So moving from a dependent to an independent environment is moving from dependent where you need someone else in order to get something done. And then moving to an independent environment is that you can do it. You can get things done without anyone else's assistance. But then the next step that you want to move into is an interdependent environment. And this is really the pinnacle. This is where everything comes together because this is when you combine your own efforts with the efforts of others to achieve success. And that's when it gets really exciting. And so that's when you realize that as much fun as independence is and as important it is to be able to do it by yourself, when you get to do it with other people, it is so fun and so exciting and so empowering. And you can get done, so much more done. So um, that's one of the things that I wanna talk about why you wanna do this. And then the other thing is around an emotional um, bank account. So if you've ever heard of this concept around an emotional bank account, <clears throat> everyone starts in every relationship and whether it's a team environment, a one-on-one, -on -one, like a brand new recruit, a brand new director, um, or even a customer, you can even relate it to a customer. Um, when you start out with that relationship, right, your bank account is neutral. But the more that you invest in that bank account and the more things that you do to improve that relationship, you get to a positive um, account status, right? And whenever you need to take withdrawals, that's whenever you need to take something from that relationship. <laughs> then that, that bank account is there. And so whenever you are willing to make those investments, right, and take the time to invest in that relationship, then you can always make those withdrawals because you have a positive bank account. When you invest nothing in that relationship or you continue to take from that relationship, there is nothing there to give. There's nothing there to take. And so those are some important things about why. So when, um, I'm going to move into the what and the how. So the what for me is always, um, we'll talk about kind of what it looks like in our team culture, and I'm going to share some of the things that we do um, and how we do it. Um, but everything around um, our team culture is around fun and friends. So <laughs> whenever we think about um, what we do as a team, we always think about what is fun and what creates those friendships, because that's really important to me and that's really important to us. And so um, to create um, a sense of team and a sense of team pride is really, really important for us. And um, I have to tell you that the first part of that is around creating a team and a team name and, a um, and that a team identity. And, um, and I'm so glad Tracy's in the room today because I was gonna call her out whether she was here or not. <laughs> I love you, sweet friend. Um, so Tracy Marin a couple years ago talked about um, having a team name and creating that team environment. And I was in there as well as a lot of people from our team. And she <laughs> talked about how it's so important to have that team name and to not have the director's team, or excuse me, the director's name not in that team name. And that's when every single person on my team turned and looked at me because my name was in that. <laughs> So we had to make a big, big change that year. And we thought we were doing good because we created this team and it was, it was my team and it was so exciting and we had this great momentum. And then Tracy brought that to our attention and said, no, this isn't about you. This has to be about your entire team and your team has to find that identity in that name. And so we went to the airport after um, a week of conference and <laughs> It was super fun. <laughs> and we spent hours and hours when we were waiting for our flight that was delayed in a restaurant there at the airport, and we had a napkin. And this napkin was very, very long. I still have this napkin today, years later. 
And we brainstormed all these team names that we wanted to come up with and what our team would look like and what it would mean to us and what team names that we wanted to have. And so that's when we made the transition from Genevieve's Gems to the gold miners. And that was, that was Jennifer's name. I'm going to say that before she does. <laughs> it was her name. It was her idea. So we all voted on that and we stuck with that. And I had the napkin with all the different ideas that we had and um, just all the input from everyone. And it was such a fun experience to be able to do that together. And so um, that's what our team name is, is the gold miners. We still stayed with the, um, the gem theme, which was important to us because we had already established that. And so as every director in our organization promoted, they got to pick their gemstone. And so when you promote to director on our team, um, you get to pick a gemstone and you get to have your team as part of that identity, but you're all still part of the gold miners organization. And so that's just really exciting for us that we have that identity, but yet every director and everyone that's a part of that director team as they promote, they get to be a part of that and they get to create that identity. Um, and that's part of our dream board and our vision board and things like that. And, and it's, it's just really fun. So like everything that we do is around that gemstone, the color coding and things like that is part of that team. Like they get to pick that gemstone and it's just really special. There are, um, a lot of our directors put so much thought and time and energy into picking their gemstone and it's really exciting. So um, one of the other things uh, when you're creating a sense of team and a, a sense of um, pride is to create the goals together. So whether that's as part of our leadership team and our director meetings and creating those goals and those challenges together, um, or as a team, you know, when we talk about our recruiting goal for the year or our sales goal or um, anything like that, like that we always do that as part of the team. Um, the other thing that I would encourage you to do um, as leaders as you start to recruit in the organizations is to ask for feedback. And that's not something that's always easy to do, but I think it's something that's necessary is find out what you're doing well and find out where you can improve as an organization. Make sure that people are feeling included, that they're feeling a part of it, um, because otherwise you lose people and sometimes you don't know why. Um, and so asking for that feedback, specific feedback, you know, if there's some feedback that becomes very natural, right? If you're having team meetings and you have very low attendance, <laughs> you've got to ask for feedback. You've got to find out why they're not coming. You can't just say, well, they're all lazy and they don't want to come. <laughs> right? That's the easy way out. <laughs> But you want to find out, why are they not wanting to be a part of this? If you have a team page, right, a Facebook page, and people aren't a part of it, and they're not commenting, and they're not engaged, and they're not excited, or you're having a team challenge, and you're like, I threw out this team challenge, and it was amazing, and I threw out all these extra gifts, and nobody wanted it, they all suck. <laughs> you got to look internally, you got to ask for that feedback, right? You have to find out why they don't want to be a part of that and find out how you can change to include more people and to get more people excited, because it's all about that energy and that culture. Um, so ask for feedback. And you can do that simply um, like in director's meetings. You can do it individually one-on-one. -on -one. There are a lot of surveys that are very um, easy and free that are out there. So ask for that feedback. Um, the other thing um, around creating a sense of team um, is to use the strength of the individuals on your team. Um, I'm a strong believer. Um, there are so many strengths on your team. And when you find those and identify those and engage those people, they have so much to share and so much to contribute to your team. And so one example that comes to mind, I have so many examples, but one example is uh, Jennifer on our team is amazing at technology and Facebook. She's like the Facebook queen. Um, and I was a little slow to adapt to it. And so Jennifer was the one that created our, our team page, our organizational page. And she's so good at like, she's so quick to get up like the new uh, guest specials and host specials and recruiting promotions and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm like, great, you can own that, and you're really good at it. <laughs> and she does it. Uh, we also have Christy on our team that is so amazing at um, recruiting out of our state, and she is growing out of our state so quickly, and I'm so excited for her. And so, you know, to engage her and have her share with the team on what she's doing um, in order to accomplish that is really important. Use the strengths of your team. We have a lot of teachers on our team, uh, Brooke and Tanya, and all those people that are amazing teachers, and their organizational skills are just amazing. I just love them all. And so having those people share on the team and to um, to share what, what they do well on the team is so important. And so use the strengths of, strengths of your individuals on your team. Um, the other part of this is creating a positive team environment as a priority. Uh, we have a really positive team and I just love that. And so when you demand a positive culture, 
um, and you um, encourage that, and everyone on your team knows that that's what it takes to be a part of our team, you're gonna see the language change and the verbiage change, whether it's on your posts or whether it's in your meeting. Um, and don't be afraid to remove those posts if they're negative. Um, I've even had people post on the team page and then remove it before I can even get to it, and I'm pretty quick. Um, and they'll even private message me and like, so sorry, I removed that. <laughs> so, you know, expect the, the positivity on your team, um, and people are really great about that. And even if they have a negative experience, it's not to mean that nobody gets in a funk, right, or nobody has struggles in this business, but encourage them to find a positive way um, to learn from that experience. And when you post that on a team page and you're asking for um, learnings from that, or you're asking for um, um, feedback on how to make this a positive experience, you'll be surprised how many people that jump on and, and, and help. And, and that really makes a difference. Um, the other thing is to lead by example. Um, you can't expect anyone on your team to do something that you're not willing to do. And so whether it's positivity, whether it's on the amount of shows that you do, the amount of recruits that you add to your team, um, as simple as positivity, any of that kind of stuff, like you need to be able to lead that, that charge and people will follow, and that's really important. Um, and then again, back to the positivity is all situations can be a learning. Every, every single thing that happens in our business, even if it seems like the most dire situations, I promise you can be a learning, and if not for you, for someone else. And that's what I love about this business. Um, I remember the very first time that um, I, I thought I had promoted to director years ago. I missed it by $6. Oh. oh my god. Yeah. Learn from me. <laughs> There's a difference between guest sales and commissionable sales. <laughs> so this was years ago, but I always use that example for every single person on my team um, that, that misses a certain goal or a certain achievement by something so small and insignificant. So all situations in this business can be a learning. Um, and then as far as structure, um, you yeah, you're good. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so as far as structure, I just wanted to share a few of the things that we do in our organization um, that I just absolutely love, and I just love our team. So we have a lot of meetings, but they're really, really fun, in my opinion, right? Are we yep. okay? <laughs> um, so um, first and foremost, your first um, training, your initial training for a new consultant, in my opinion, should be face-to-face. So that's face-to-face -face in the same room. If you're not in the same state, then it should be on some kind of virtual video conferencing, Zoom call, something like that. Because face-to-face -face is really important for me and that's how you create relationships in this business. And so whether it's a recruiting interview or a recruiting chat, whatever you call it, um, or an initial training within this business, it should be live, face-to-face, one-on-one, or on a video chat. I think that's really important and it's important to us. Um, as far as uh, meetings and trainings that we provide for our team, we do three uh, meetings a month. Uh, that can be scary to some people, but we, I love them. Um, the first one is our team meeting. Um, that consists of uh, monthly recognition. Um, and it consists of games, um, tickets and drawings and recognitions, um, as well as training. And we try and touch on the three big ones in this business, which are always um, shows, recruits, um, sales, excuse me, sales, bookings, and recruits. Um, then we also have a recipe night, um, which is once a month, and we combine that. It's kind of like the old style cooking book and a, a, a morph between that and a recipe night. So we always focus on products, um, the show format, um, re recipes, theme shows, certain product lines. You know, it's something around cooking and recipes. Um, and we do that once a month. Um, and then we have um, a third meeting that we added um, a couple of years ago to our organization called the Dream Achieve Meeting. And it's a meeting that, we've, that we focus on small um, group training. Um, we get to do specific topics, whether it's a book club. Right now, we're, again, we're doing um, seven habits of highly effective people. Um, maybe we pick around like the four pillars in our business. Uh, maybe we pick a specific topic like um, um, you know, gaining contacts while out and about. So we pick specific topics, and that's our third meeting of the month, and that's called a Dream Achieve Meeting. Um, and for those of you who follow acronyms, we didn't want another damn meeting. <laughs> so, um, it happened. It's okay. <laughs> so that's our Dream Achieve Meeting. Um, all of our 
our meetings consist of fun and games. We always try and find a way to make it fun. Um, we do drawings. Um, so maybe we'll do raffle drawings. Um, we do on-time drawings. We do um, travel treasure for us. Um, I donate a product to our meeting um, every month and I give it away and the meeting or the money from that raffle goes into our travel treasure, um, which then helps offset the cost of our hotel rooms at conference. Um, so um, in the past, they've been anywhere from three to 40 bucks for three nights. So um, we do those kind of things to make it fun and exciting for people to come to meetings. So even if you don't come to conference, you get to go away with a prize and products. Um, we do on-time drawings, we do other drawings for our meetings that we do in August and uh, February before our new products launch. Uh, we always do, um, I give away my director box for free, so people somehow always come to that meeting. It's amazing, like you increase your attendance really quick. Um, and we do all kinds of fun games. We've done everything from um, Pamper Chef Jeopardy and Pamper Chef Family Feud. And I mean, we've done carnival games, which was super fun. We did that last summer. Um, so we have lots of fun games and um, ideas to make it fun and exciting and to learn in a, in a fun spirit. Um, we always do um, pre and post meetings. So we always have drinks and, um, and food and things like that before the meeting. We always have um, networking and stuff after the meeting. So people always want to come early to a meeting and then they always want to stay late, which is really nice. Um, we do fun team time. So we just went to a baseball game a couple weeks ago as a team and we invited family and the kids and stuff like that. And we had over 50 people at one of our local baseball games there, which was super fun. Uh, we do a holiday party every year where um, we get together and we do a big potluck. We do um, an ugly sweater contest, which is super entertaining. Um, <laughs> Lynn always takes the cake. She's so good at that. <laughs> um, and we always do like a, a Christmas sock exchange and some other fun stuff. And we include the spouses in that one too. Um, we have a, a recruiting dinner um, every quarter. So if you recruited so we just had one um, last week which is super fun we had a surf and turf dinner at my house um, and as long as you sign a new team member in April May or June you got invited to our July recruiting dinner um, in addition to an awesome dinner um, that that I take care of we've done Korean barbecue we did the last time the time before that <laughs> that was really funny we kind of smoked out the house but junk for cook so it was worth it <laughs> it was a lot of time but that was really fun. Um, the time before that, I did a big brisket and baked potatoes. So I always try and do something really nice and exciting, um, something that, that makes, that people want to join. So it's not just a social thing, they get fed, and then we always do plate presents because they're all about the presents on our team. So <laughs> so depending on how many recruits you had in that corner, your, your plate gets a little fuller with presents. Um, and so we have lots of ideas like that. So we always try and make things fun and exciting, always want to increase uh, participation, whether it's in our meetings, our recruiting, um, our team challenges. Every single team challenge we do on our team page can be done virtually. Um, so if you're not part of our local team, which is really exciting, then you can still be a part of our team challenges. And we have lots of those that go on constantly. And we have a few that we're doing right now. So that's about it. Questions. Do you have any questions? <laughs>